standard for is tables and graphs. And on this one, it also includes all those words that we need to understand for experiments, like words such as control group and experimental group. And then we need to understand constants. These are the variables that we keep the same between both the control group and the experimental group. Um, like in our photosynthesis lab for um, figuring out where the mass of a plant comes from, we had to keep, um, like we had to pick uh, an experimental group or an independent variable, which we, which was either sunlight, soil, carbon dioxide, or um, water. Um, and so if we picked, let's say water, we had to keep all the other variables the same, like give them the same amount of carbon dioxide, same amount of sunlight, same amount of, um, of soil. We couldn't vary those things. We had to keep them completely the same. Those are our constants. And then um, the independent variable was the thing that we changed. And then we have um, for example, um, the thing that we changed in the thing and the experiment I just spoke of was the, um, the water. So we'd have one that we'd give water to and the other one we wouldn't give water to. Or we could have like various plants and give some um, water, just a little bit of water and some more and we'd measure that amount. And that would be our independent variable. The dependent variable is um, what we measure. So in that plant experiment, what we measured would have been the mass of the plant. Did it increase over time? Um, when we're creating a table, sorry, when, we, when we're creating a graph, need to mute. Make sure we do the hash marks. And we try to keep them, um, let's see what I said here, I liked how I put it. Um, increments in space need to be equal, as equal as we can get them. And then um, the numbers we use also need to be at the same increments. So we, if we start by twos here, then we have to keep going up by twos. Four, six, eight, ten. We start by ones here, then we go by ones. Okay, we also need to remember that the independent variable goes on the x-axis. This is the x, this is the y. The dependent variable goes here. That's usually because we're measuring and we're seeing, we want to see how it either increases or decreases with this as we as we alter this independent variable. Um, you also, you don't label them independent and dependent. You label them with the actual variable it is. So if this is time or it's, um, you know, like in our last experiment, we didn't use hashtags um, down here. Not like that anyway, because we did a bar graph. We did um, like, before and after. So this is the first measurement of the temperature. And then we were, would have two columns. So at first the temperatures were probably very similar. And then after um, one of them probably was got higher than the other one, increased. So um, we'd label these, we, maybe we can have a key and say this one right here um, 
was um, the bottle without um, CO2 in it, and this one is the bottle with CO2. I saw some of you do that already in your experiment. So this is our, these are our independent variables. Time is always an independent variable. I looked that up because I wasn't sure, but yeah, time is always an independent variable. And then um, we, so, but we had two independent variables, right? We had the before and after, which is time. Um, and that's why I put time down here. That's what it's talking about. So we're not getting very specific. Some of you put zero, so that's when you first, um, zero seconds, when you, or minutes, say minutes. And this was 60 minutes, and that works too. But um, time is down here, but you also have these two variables here, so you have to have a way to show um, them with this key. I'm making a mess here. But that's what you need to understand about graphs and hash marks and the increments and spaces and in the numbers that they're equal. Um, also in this standard, you need to understand um, hypothesis and conclusions. A lot of you, I don't know what's up, but you, you don't get to the conclusion. That was like one of the most important parts of experiment and you need to take time to do that. So when you do a hypothesis, you start with if, when you do a, a conclusion, you start with when. And then both of them, you go to then, and then because. And this is, this is just, this is kind of um, structured because we just wanna get you to thinking, okay, and what you're doing is if, independent variable, because you need to know what to include on this. If, and then, or when, then, and then it's your dependent variable. Um, and you say that, what it's gonna do, whether it's gonna increase it or decrease it, that's always seems to be what we're talking about, increasing something or decreasing something. And then your because has to quote the law. This is the law. And the law, all you're saying is because um, when um, any time you add this independent variable, then this is what happens to the dependent variable. And that's the proportional. Is two thumbs up. When the independent variable is increased, so is the dependent variable. Or when the independent variable is decreased, so is the dependent variable. So that's proportional. That's the proportional law. That's what you're going to state, right? Uh, or inversely proportional. And that just means arrow up. As the independent variable increases, the dependent variable decreases, or the opposite. As the independent variable decreases, the independent variable increases. So that's the law. That's what we're talking about. The law, whether it's a proportional law or inversely proportional. So here you get specific, the specific independent variable. You talk about that. The specific dependent variable. And then this is general because this is the general law that happens among all these types of specific independent variables when they associate with these specific types of dependent variables. Okay. We're going to keep going. There's a few little things um, in regards to those experiments that we've been learning all year long. And that is um, like your procedures. You just you usually need to just number them or 
at least put um, bullet points next to them. Um, and you need to be specific with them. Like you're giving the directions for a recipe to somebody who's never made it before. Okay, and so you need your procedures and then your materials. Just think through the experiment and think of all the things you need. This is probably not so important to you because you're not me. I have to think through the materials. I write a list for them and then I go into the science labs and look for those things. And I've got to have them down on a list. Otherwise, I, I'm going to be going back and forth a million times. So that's just, that's for our experiment preparation. You need to have the certain things that you're going to need. But because that's been provided for you, um, all you're doing is basically looking over on the counter and saying, okay, what am I going to need for this? Um, the research question is something that's come up a few times on some of the labs we've done. And that's just, um, again, has to do with the independent variable. Your, the research question is usually, how will the independent variable affect the dependent variable? So if we get this independent and dependent variable stuff down, then we'll be able to do this every time. Another thing that we've often done this year are we start this whole thing out before we even do the experiment. Um, we always start out a standard with observations. Like the time that we did cellular respiration, the first thing we started out with observing, um, we observed animals eating. And then oftentimes we're asking you to come up with questions. And in that same standard, cellular respiration, we did questions on sticky notes and we brought them up to the board because we're trying to get to this point right here to research questions. We want to have questions about how phenomena work, how, the, how independent variables affect the dependent variables to create certain phenomena. So, um, that was our hope this year with questions, to try to come up with scientific um, questions that will then um, make, cause us to look for the answers. And then when we actually learn about the concepts in the standard, we're, they're, they're answering the questions that we had in the beginning of the standard. Okay, that's it for that one.